Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. We welcome viewers joining us around the world to Ponds Forge Arena here in the steel city of Sheffield in England. To Championship Boxing, promoted by Hatton Promotions and sponsored by Brand Nutrition and T5Xtreme.com. We begin our coverage this evening with Championship Boxing and a contest of 12 three minute rounds to decide the European Bantamweight Championship. Our officials appointed for this contest, the supervisor, Mr. Charles Giles, the timekeeper, Mr. Barry Pinder, the judges scoring the contest on the 10 must system at ringside, Mr. Eriki Marinon from Finland, Mr. Verzalav Nokolav of Bulgaria, and Mr. Guado Kalalaris of Italy. And when the action begins, our third man in the ring, the referee, Mr. Freddy Rafan of Denmark. Ladies and gentlemen, 12 three-minute rounds for the European Bantamweight Championship. And firstly, introducing the challenger, fighting out of the red corner. He wears the light blue trunks. Comes from Kazakhstan, weighed in at eight stone, five pound. He enters the ring tonight with a 22-fight professional record, consisting of 21 wins and one loss. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the challenger for the title, Zanat Zakiyev. And across the corner ring in the blue corner, wearing the brown and white trunks. He hails from France, weighed in at eight stone five pound. Uh, brings a 23 fight professional record, 20 wins and two losses and one no contest. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the current European Bantamweight Champion, Karim Gwerfi. The referee, Mr. Freddy Raffan, will now give his final instructions to both boxers. Referee just having a close look to make sure everything's okay. Remove your hat at all times. Just touch gloves. Back to the corner, ready for the fight. Some polite Charles instructions from the, the Danish referee. Set is out. Round one. Zanat Zakayanov has that oriental look about him. He was actually born not too far away from the Chinese border in Kazakhstan. Karim Gwerfi, though. As we said earlier, he's coming into this on the back of probably the best performance of his career. Has fought at a high level before, lost on points in 2012 when he challenged for the interim WBA flyweight title against Juan Carlos Reveco. And has actually beaten last year in a fight for the French bantamweight title. So he wasn't really supposed to be winning that fight against Stefan Jamoy when he won this European title, but win it he did, and it's given him a number eight ranking with the IBF, and the IBF champion, of course, Stewie Hall, who's going to be defending his title on June the 7th against Paul Butler. Gwerfi clearly the taller man, but you can see Zakayanov, who's been working with Ricky Hatton, and there's one of those trademark Hatton-esque left hooks. Not good exchange there. Gwerfi landed with some, some good headshots. High quality work from both men in this opening round. And it's certainly not looking as though it's going to be a chess match. They both went up with intent, and they both trying to take the centre of the ring. Zakayanov's coming into this on the back of a 16-fight winning run. And he's stopped his last six. I told you that Gwerfi's ranked number eight by the IBF. Zakayanov's ranked number six by the WBC. So these are good operators. ZZ, Janet Zakayanov. Well, Zakayanov looks, he's got a solid look about him, hasn't he? Nice wide stance. Shout of the body movements and a vicious left hook to the body. Thank you. 
Murphy also has had some success with that left hand. Appears to have decent footwork, the Frenchman. It's kind of comes from a fighting family. His brother was a mate of Gennady Golovkin, who uh, can also fight a bit. <laughs> Oh, nice left hook to the body there from Guerfi. Good opening round, this. It's been really competitive, hasn't it? Left hook to the body again from the Frenchman. Lovely uppercut there from range there from Guerfi as well. Fast hands, doesn't he? He's boxed well, he has in this. Well, he's been putting a lot of pressure. Nice little uh, one two there. Under pressure in the early stages of the round, the Frenchman, but he's come back well with some quality shots in the closing stages. Lovely shot there. Beautifully disguised, wasn't it? Lovely really, really left hand work. from Zakayanov. Last scoring shots of that opening round. And Ricky Hatton telling him that his performance there was excellent. You're only getting caught when you come back out in straight lines. Yeah? You're throwing a combination. You're landing your, you're landing your combination, but he's getting you with the last one. Yeah. What do we do? Come out, move off to the side, move your head after the combination. Yeah. Okay. That's the only time you're getting caught. Keep them body shots going. Keep them body shots going. I want them from the first round to the last regular, up the middle, round the side. When you get up close, probably let them have two uppercuts. If the first one lands, the second one's gonna land, isn't it? Corners. Ten yeah. seconds. Good round. Good round, good round indeed for Zakaino. Maybe enough to have won it. Round two. Did you score the opener to Zakaino, the challenger? I did, yes, but only just. I think it was a close round. I think Murphy had his enough successes to, give, to make an argument for the round. Again, straight like straight out again like it was in the first. Oh, lovely jabs. Zach and I, you know, he comes up with all the power. You see, he's, he's the more compact, looks the stronger puncher of the two. You think but he is the bigger puncher? I, it looks like it, doesn't it? But, but Guerfi, every time he gets hit, he comes back, but he punches back straight away. Certainly, the record would suggest that the power lies with Zakai and often uh, Guerfi. Was he just hurt a little by those two big body shots? Suddenly, just uh, onto the back foot. Good body shots there from Guerfi. Just. He's a tall man with a long range, but not using it, is he? You know, he's, he's fight, fighting a close range. Only with the five stoppage wins, Guerfi. The winner of this one could clearly be moving closer to a possible world title shot. Kind of being told by the referee for use of the head. Again, another close right now, just for me, again at the moment, Zakhyanov's just more quality in his punches for me. Solid jab in that combination there from Zakhyanov. Yeah, Ricky Hatton and Mike Jackson in the corner giving their uh, approval of what their man's producing in there. Well, for me, Gwerfi's just giving away his his natural attributes, he's giving away, he's, he's letting Zakhyanov get close. He's not jabbing well, is he? No, no, he wants to fight in close, and he fights in close quite effectively, but against Zakhyanov, no, a, a short and much more compact fighter, he needs to keep it long. Both the fights that he's had under the Hatton tutelage, Zakhyanov has scored stoppage wins, Michael Escobar stopped him in four, Yuri Voronin got rid of him in seven. Nice little combination there from Guerfi, though. So kind enough hitting him with a left hook. Oh, that's a nice, a nice uppercut as well there from Guerfi, right hand. It's kind enough. They said when they first joined them, he used to come in in straight lines, steaming in and trying to take people's head off with every punch he threw. And they've just tried to get a little bit more subtlety into his work. Lovely uppercut now, little combination. What, what quality this work from both fighters, though, punch for punch. Well, the Sheffield crowd here is being treated to a high quality encounter. Zakhyanov landed with a big right hand on the road there, but Guerfi paying him back.
Good round. A sneak left through the guard just after the bell had gone from Guerfi. Not too hard. A little bit naughty. This is this is good quality stuff from both fighters, really is. Another round to the challenger, did you have it? Yeah, just yeah, just again, just because he's going forward a bit more, I think a little more weight behind his punches, and that's just the difference for me. Look his head back and then spin off to the side, yeah? Yeah? Yeah, you understand, yeah? And you know, when he gets on the ropes, you know, don't leave it there, yeah? Don't do it centre ring, yeah? When his back's up against the rope, leave it there, measure him, send that right hand over. That right hand lead, that right hand lead, that drill, the drill we work on in the gym every day, you catch him with that, sharp, sharp, touch him with that, and bang, left up over the top. Very, very good. Bonus, 10 seconds. Ricky Hatton living the moment. Lovely to see Ricky still involved, Set isn't it? Having, yeah. made, having made Round his three. money and his fortune. Must have been a temptation just to walk away from it. Many do, but here he is still trying to put it back in. And he looks like he's relishing in the, in the, in the new role as a trainer and doing quite well. Worth needs to double up that jab and he's keeping nice and long. Keep spinning. Zakai and off. So kind enough, just trying to set him up for that left hook to the body. You can see why Gwerfi beat your boy. He's, you know, he's, a, he's a tougher than what he looks, isn't he? More solid than what he looks. He's tall and quite gangly, but he's tough. Well, at the moment, Zakainov, on our cards anyway, has won the first couple of rounds, but it's not a sprint, it's a 12-rounder, this. Oh, they're very, they're very, very close rounds, because both fighters are landing with quality shots. Both of them have gone the 12-round distance on one occasion previously. For me so far in this round, Zakainov doing all the threatening, but for me, Gwerfi is the one landing with the better shots at the moment off the back foot. A good left hook there over the top from Zakainov. Kel Brook watching with great interest on the far side of the ring there. Would be world champion. It's a nice right hand from Zakayanov and Guerfi walked straight into that one. I think for this, so far for this round for me, I think Guerfi's box really well off the off the back foot. Cut from Zakainov. Trying to put pressure under Gurthy on those ropes, who fires back a couple of decent shots of his own. It's quite cute, isn't he? Yeah, well what he fires back when you think he's not gonna doesn't let you doesn't let you get a foothold on anything, Gurthy. That's what makes him tough, makes him hard to beat. You can see already he's got some skills. Lovely bit of counter in there from Gurthy again. Zakayanov just boxing the straight lines the right in this round. The right-hand body shot was a good one. Zakayanov doesn't want to fall into the trap of being just a little bit predictable, coming in in straight yeah. lines, as they said was his biggest fault when he came to them. It's good work, good work from Gwerthi. Yes, Zakayanov needs to move that head a little bit more like he was in the, in the previous round. Well, the champion certainly getting a foothold in the fight in that round. Yeah, that's a round they give to, to Gwerfi. But they're good rounds, aren't they? Really competitive, real top quality stuff. He's trying a little bit more, isn't he? He's trying to walk you on. He's trying to do a little bit more. He's trying to do a little bit more each round. Listen, the only, the only way we're letting him, the only way he's going to win this fight is if we make a mistake, yeah? You've got to be, you've got to focus, keep concentrating. Yeah? The only going to lose this fight is if we make a mistake. Same all the time. Move your head after the combination. Sometimes, sometimes pull the combination, jab, and then move off. Okay. Yeah. yeah? But watch it. Don't leave. Don't leave that. Don't leave that chin hanging out. Yeah. Okay. He's trying to. He's waiting while you finish your combination, and he's trying to okay. land that big one. Yeah. Okay. Watch it. Be careful. You're doing really, really well. Mustn't forget that jab. Change the pace. Change the pace. Okay. Good yeah. shoot, mate. 
Ricky Hatton, not only a very good fighter, of course, once in the day, but a great student in the game as well. He has got a pretty encyclopedic knowledge of fighters around the world, and he's very well aware that that was possibly a round which went wrong for his man and carrying Gwerfi, the champion, seeming as though he's getting his way back into the fight and probably taking that third round. Well, what Gwerfi's doing is every time Zach Hyanov, he's done it in this round, every time Zach Hyanov throws a punch, whether he lands or not, he throws with him straight away. And, and as Zach Hyanov boxes, look with his straight lines, his head's there to be hit. Stop! Stop! So Ricky asked him to move the head a little bit more. Trying to get Zakhanov to work in behind his jab. And he's just getting a little bit ragged in there now, and the referee's not going to stand for that. The only loss on Zakhanov's record was relatively early in his career against a, a decent Russian southpaw called Sap Sahib Yusarov who's uh, gone on from that and has maintained his undefeated record, so maybe no disgrace in that. Perhaps one which could happen again somewhere down the line, who knows. Another little uppercut there from Gwerthy. Fast hands again from the champion, picked his man off, jabbed well. Just found his rhythm, hasn't he, I think, in the last round, or round and a half, Gwerthy. Can you put your finger on why it is that Gwerthy maybe is just, at this stage, seems after that very fast start from Zakhanov, seems to have settled into his rhythm? I think, I think Zakhanov's gone a little bit in straight lines, but it's also Gwerthy doesn't let you get a foothold or anything, because he's always firing back, so... I think Zakhayanov is struggling a little bit with that. And that's allowed Gwerfi to get back into the fight. Bit of a use of the shoulder in there from Zakhayanov, getting away with it. Zakhayanov not able to quite put the pressure on as effectively as he did in the first couple of rounds. Well, Gwerthi's punching from range now, isn't he? Taller fight with a longer reach, he's throwing in combinations, but he's throwing a nice and long, long left hook as well, so Zakhayanov can't get close to counter. Not too much quality coming from the challenger in this round. And again. Three punch combination from Gwerfi as he came off the ropes. Good round for the champion. Very good round for the champion. And that's, that's the clearest round that anybody's won so far. Boxed very well off the back foot and tried to, and then in the second half of that round, started to push Zakhayanov back a little bit, which is a worrying sign for him. There is Gwerfi, 27 years old. A couple of defeats on his record. And after a bit of a sticky start, he's started to get into his rhythm and boxing well. That's where he came back off the ropes after a couple of speculative sort of swings from Zakhayanov. But he's dipping to his to his right very low, isn't he, Gwerfi? So he's not allowing Zakhayanov to get that right hand into play, which he wants to, which gives him the purchase for the left hook to the body. And firing back all the time, Gwerfi. That's why Zakhayanov's struggling. He's, he's trying to push him on the ropes to set something up, and Gwerfi oh, fires back with three punch combinations. Did rather think when we were looking through at these two fighters and Seven their respective counts. merits beforehand that it was going to be a close four. one. And not too much between these two as we move into the fifth round. The champion, Karim Gwerfi, the taller man on the left-hand side of your picture, against Zizi Zadat Zakhayanov from Kazakhstan. It's not only a close one, it's a good one. Yeah, good quality from both oh, lads. It's it's brilliant, yeah. isn't it? We'll say it's the old adage, isn't it? Styles make fights, but this one's really gelled nicely. Stop! Head's coming Stop! In close there. Good right hand there from range from Gwerfi. Oh, 
That's better from. Oh. Beautiful shot. <laughs> Lovely uppercut. Beautiful right hand from the champion. As I was just about to say, that's better from Zakayanov. Just getting a little bit of rhythm in his work. <laughs> Caught again by a couple of solid right hands. At the moment, the boxing skills of Gwerthi are prevailing. Well, for me, Gwerthi just made a little adjustment and he's just getting a little bit more range in his work, boxing a little bit more from distance when he lets his hands go. And I think that's the difference from the earlier rounds. We just allow it. Zakhyanov just can't get close. Can't get inside to throw those damaging body shots, which were really reaping dividends in the early stages. And Assuming, of course, that the judges from Finland, Bulgaria and Italy are seeing it a similar way to the way we are. Oh, a lovely shot again from the champion, Guerfi. He's boxing well, I think, you know, the last couple of rounds, especially the last round, found his rhythm lovely. And again in this round. That's a good right hand from Zakaino. Perhaps needed it because he just a sense that he was losing heart a little as Gwerfi was starting to rack up the points. Well, Zakaino, sometimes when he gets close to, to Gwerfi, just standing in front of him, he needs to step to the side, as a Ricky Hatton used to do. To get that left hand on the top. That's a two, two, well, that's a Zakhyanov with the power shot, with the right hand, he has taken out his man and is the new European champion. And, Z and Gwerthi is still down, the paramedics in the ring, giving some oxygen. What a terrific shot that was from Zakhyanov, who's uh, making the celebrations relatively muted until they make sure that uh, his stricken opponent is OK. It was a terrific shot that he caught him with. We'll look again once we know for certain that uh, Karim Gwerf is OK. To the point that that punch had been landed, it really looked as though Gwerf was just starting to boss the fight. And Zakhyanov, having started so well and then having struggled for a couple of rounds, just landed an absolute peach of a right hand which did the damage. Karim Gwerfi, he was trying to get back to his feet, just unable to do so. Still being kept down by the paramedics, but now being helped to his feet and then onto his stool in the corner. So Karen Gwerfi now the former champion. He's OK. Continues to be given uh, oxygen. So let's watch again how the end of the fight came. Barry, great shot. Well shot. In and he just walked Gwerfi onto the right hand, didn't he? So we're talking about angles, well, the angles Ricky Hatton used to get. Gwerfi just trying to get out of the trouble off the ropes and have the big right hand over the top. Dropped the head as well, didn't he? So kind enough, just get more weight on the shot. And really, against the run of play, I thought, John, even though I had the fight even, it was all going Gwerfi's way. He was boxing really well off the back foot, seems to be controlling things comfortably. And Zach Hyanoff seemed to be struggling to find a bit of distance. He is a handful, though, isn't he? Strong, punches hard. Yeah. How far do you think he can go? I mean, he's 30 years old, relatively late in his career. How far do you think he can go? European <laughs> champion now. Obviously, he's got those top 10 rankings, so potentially he's in the con he's in contention for a world title shot. Well, yeah, you know, I think it's still early days to talk about fighting for world titles just yet. But he, he, I think, you know, he got some skills and he boxed a really quality operator there against Guerfi. Both fighters. Showing tremendous ability, no, no real commitment as well. One of the punch back every time one got hit, the other one wanted to let his hands go with intent. I think I think he's quality, Tankayanov. I really do. I think you no, know, he but just beat a real quality guy, and knocked him out, with, with with a world class right hand over the top. Well, that's 17. He's won on the spin now. Only that one defeat 
in a professional career which has now endured for some seven years or more and counting and still improving maybe While we're watching Zakhanov here, paramedics still just making absolutely certain that Karim Gwerf is OK. Good fight, though, John. Real, real quality in all in both both the boxes' work. Really well from start to finish. I certainly didn't see that explosive win. Explosive finish coming, but it was a terrific shot when it came. And that's three stoppage victories now under the tutelage of Ricky Hatton. And he stopped his last nine as Zakhanov. And uh, it's just a little bit of a danger that he's going to be joining kind of the Who Needs Him Society. <laughs> you would think so, wouldn't you? Well, there you are. Nice uh, display of respect from the two men. Karim Gwerfi. Back on his feet, he's OK, and he, more than anybody else, knows that he was caught by a terrific shot. And now confirmation of the result from Mike Goodall. Ladies and gentlemen, after two minutes, 39 seconds of around five, Karim uh, Gruffy fails to beat the referees, count to ten. The winner and the new European Bantamweight champion uh, from Kazakhstan, Zanat Zakianov. And ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciations, Karim Gwafi. And I'll now ask the supervisor in charge, Mr. Charles Giles, to present the championship belt to the new European Bantamweight champion, uh, Zanat Zakianov. A happy man, the new champion, and well he might be. Good performance when it mattered, and a terrific knockout punch.